Nintendo Switch. Let me show you what's going on. Rule number one, we want to look at the port. While well, it's a little bit dirty, it has been torqued a little bit. You can see a little bit of separation on the shield. Otherwise, it is solid in the middle. If this moves at all, you generally don't want to stick power to it. But I think we're safe to do so. Let's test on our benchtop PSU first. We're looking at PSU Channel 1. We're stuck at 0.47. Interesting. Could be good or bad. 0.47 on both sides. No power. We are, however, pulling 15 volts at 0.52. I think the next step we want to do here is probably plug it up to the PC and see if it's being recognized. Okay, interestingly, we are not picking up an RCM. The only thing we can do from here, we know for sure it is pulling 15 volts, so I'm going to say it's probably not the M92T36, probably not the port. So we're going to have to pull this apart and maybe do some initial diagnostics before we disassemble it entirely and go from there. Let's try something a little out of the ordinary for my testing. I've hooked up my modified iPhone power squid, which we have retrofitted with Nintendo Switch and Nintendo Switch Lite battery connectors. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to prompt it to boot using the OEM charger and then I'm going to stick it on the computer and see if it's in RCM. It may be a case of the battery's too dead to tell us. Okay, I'm still not seeing RCM. Let's do some testing around. Once you crack open the Nintendo Switch, looking from the back, the board is in this orientation. These are the common fault testing zones. We're gonna start with the M92T36 and work our way down to the BQ24193. Hitting their test pads and MOSFETs on the way. Let's start with the M92T36. The first battery we're going to test is actually connected to the Pi 3 USB on the back of the board. And the line we're concerned about is the one going to the chip. And it is dead short. Okay, let's check the rest of the capacitors. I don't think we're going to have a problem because we are pulling 15 volts. MOSFETs appear to be okay. Let's check our test pads. Not expecting anything to be wrong. Of course our fuse should be fine. Should not have a short on this coil. We should have continuity going through it. Same rules apply to the BQ24193 as the m 92 t 36 except that it has multiple capacitors with multiple lines going to the chip. And everything seems to be checking out. But it's quite clear we do have a problem on the other side of the board, so we're going to have to remove the board and look at the other side. In order to remove these little mesh pads without tearing them, I set my heat to 130. That's usually enough to release the adhesive. The only time it fails is if the uh, adhesive is just extraordinarily old. Like so, they'll never know you were there. For your orientation purposes, this is where we'll be testing on side A. Uh, we're gonna test the Pi 3 USB and the filters and see if we got a problem going on here. All right, first thing we're gonna test is this big capacitor right here. And just like the other chips, we're worried about the signal line going to the chip. And we don't want that to be shorted to ground. And it is dead shorted to ground, which means this chip is very likely bad. We hope it's bad, because if we remove that chip and we're still short to ground, it's not a good sign. Let's go ahead and check our filters. First things first, we don't want any shorts on these filters. And we have a short on this line. It's not good. Usually indicative of the chip being bad as well. Let's check and make sure our filters are good. We want continuity going through the filters, both sides. Okay. But we don't want continuity going side to side on the filters. That would mean they're shorted. And they are not. Very good. So we have a short on this line here and a short right here. So I would say that chip has failed and without managing to blow out its own brains. I think the approach should be right now to just remove the chip and test again and make sure it's gonna be worth pursuing further. For your orientation purposes, we have zeroed in on our problem, which we believe is the Pi 3 USB, which is located right here on the board. In order to remove this chip, I am going to need to set up my equipment, and while I set up my equipment, let me throw up my expected temperatures for this job. These temperatures are brought to you by the associate links in the description. If you go to my video description and click on one of these links and buy any of this equipment, a small portion of that purchase will go to supporting the channel. And I greatly appreciate you and won't cost you an extra dime. Moment of truth, let's pull this chip and see if it's going to be worth continuing. Feel free to comment right now without uh, scrubbing ahead. What do you think is going to happen here? We're waiting for every pad to wet, and then we pull the chip. No need to touch it before then. Let's test again. We have a ground pad right here. Okay, this short has cleared. How about this one? This short has cleared. 
So, very fortunately for the customer, both shorts have cleared. But it looks like we can grab a new chip for this one and throw it on and cross our fingers and hopefully we will have fixed our problem. Put a new chip on, we're waiting for that center pad to wet. And when we place the chip, we want to make sure it makes contact with that center pad. Surface tension will do magic. Center it up, remove your heat, let it tack down, then place a little bit of downward pressure and re-wet. Not too much. Flatten it to the board. Clean up the mess. Good. And good. Let's test and make sure we did not reacquire any shorts. Okay, no short here. And no short here. Excellent. Does it mean the chip is any good? So we need to test. I hope you're getting value out of this video. If you find this something you're not ready to tackle just yet, just a reminder, I do offer these services both local and mail-in. Just head over to micromage.repair, click free quote, fill out the form, and I'll get back to you personally. If you mention this video, I'll give you a 10% discount on this repair. Let's see if we get anything resembling normal recognition. What we want here is just some recognition that we're plugging this into the board on both sides. This test does not always result in anything definitive, but that looked pretty good. Let's see if it'll do it on the other side. Okay, that looked good. Okay, now let's see if it's booting. We've hooked up our modified iPhone power squid again, and we're going to activate with the OEM. We're looking at PSU channel 2. And what we want to see here is just a steady climb and amperage. So for some reason, it's just starting out high today. Let's see if we are docking. Now on that side, sometimes you have to try it on multiple sides, sometimes multiple times. And there we go, we are docking. So it appears that our Pi 3 USB was our problem. But we still need to reassemble and run it through our normal testing and go from there. We're back up on its battery power. Just want to make sure everything is working. Connect my Joy-Cons. They're charging. Excellent. Let's make sure we're picking up our networks. And we are. Make sure we have Bluetooth. We do. Battery's about dead though. Fan is spinning. We're pulling 15 volts. Let's put Street Fighter in. And it's recognizing. It seems we've solved our problem. If you got value out of this video, I think you'll get value out of this one. And I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.